uh, been rolling a lot with the first group. What have been your impressions of uh, everything that's happened, I guess, since you enrolled? Just awesome. sum it up. I loved it, you know, every single second, you know, just being out of the community, seeing everybody, the fans and all that, I'm just – Getting to know these these two people and the whole team, like it's been it's been awesome. I've enjoyed my time, and um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You've been here just a couple of months, I guess now, and it seems like everybody's kind of really welcomed you in and embraced you. And just uh, your thoughts on just the team overall and and how they've accepted you. For sure, um, I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful for everybody. Um, you know, like you said, accepting me into. You know, they're, they're family, you know. You know, every single team's different. But, you know, there wasn't no, like, oh, he's a new guy. They're like, okay, it's time to it's time to go. It's time to ball. So that's what that's what I love, you know. Um, even these two, we're in the locker room. We're laughing, giggling, just telling jokes, all of that. So it, it's pretty cool. And uh, Malachi and Jacoby, you guys worked a lot with the twos today. Um, just your thoughts on the scrimmage. And, Taylor, if you could chime in on your thoughts on, on how you performed today also. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Just overall, I thought the O line did a really good job today. Um, I don't think it was too many sacks. Thought the re receivers got off the ball really good, and the running backs ran the ball, you know, really good. So uh, I know it's some things we have to, you know, correct in the quarterback room. But I know I feel like every quarterback quarterback that went in today had a really good day. Yeah, I can say the same. I mean, it was executed all across the board. QBs did their thing. Though aligned at theirs, receivers. I mean, it's a team effort. I mean, we started out hot. As y'all probably could tell, we kind of went downhill, which is something we cannot be doing in the SEC. So, therefore, that's something we're going to pick up as a team. But overall, I think it was a pretty good day. I, I'd say the same thing. You know, everybody um, getting better each and every day. I mean, it's not going to be um, perfection, but, you know, that's our standard. And that's what um, we're reaching. You know, like Jacoby said, we start out fast, you know, but, you know, we need to finish. You know, we got to be consistent with that. And that's that's the one thing that, you know, we're going to look at the film and just look at the little details because I feel like there was nothing that the defense did um, that stopped us. It was just us making making the mistakes. You know, we just got to get cleaned up in the film room and um, come back uh, next practice and, and correct them. Going back to the running game, uh, a couple of guys, uh, Russell for sure, you know, Plucked a couple of guys, ran over a couple of guys. How much juice does that give you guys on offense to see see a running back do that? Oh, I mean, for I can speak for these two guys. They're fast. They love running the football. So therefore, whenever they see a running back do something like so so great, it's like okay, it adds fuel fuel to them. I mean, it adds fuel to me as well as a passer. But for them, for these two guys, I mean, you see them making plays twenty four seven with their feet. And like as for me as a guy, it's like all right it kind of like adds to feel like the competition level yeah. raises just because like as a quarterback, you expect to pass, but overall these two guys can do both. So it's like, it adds levels to my game. And then with the running backs, it's like, all right, if they can do it, I can do it. And so, I mean, it for sure has feel, feel to the whole offense as a whole. When you, when you come into a experience like this, you know, you, you're going against teammates, but um, how do you kind of keep that competitive level up by still trying to be smart about what you're doing and recognizing that that is still a teammate, you know, across the way? Um, I just think that it goes into like just knowing your teammates and knowing how everybody plays out there. Um, you know, I feel like that we want to take care of our guys. Uh, the defense wants to take care of us. So, I, like as you've seen today, I don't think there was any you know bad hits, blindside hits, anything like that. So, I just think the main thing we want to keep everybody healthy. You know, going into fall camp. When you see a running back run like that, you kind of want to take that black jersey off and <laughs> absolutely, sure. absolutely. Sure. Colby, you've uh, you've worked with a lot of offensive coordinators in your time at college football. What stands out maybe about Coach Petrino his first year, and you know what maybe makes him a special offensive coordinator? I mean, this question right here is just like something growing up from Arkansas. You know, you've seen his offense since you were young. You didn't really know, but you knew it was explosive. But now, since I'm in it, with his offense, it's probably one of the most explosive offenses I've been in. It's like it's not hard on the quarterback but you have to know the details of the quarterback for his offense. And with that being said, I mean, the quarterback has all the tools. Like, he's going to give you everything you need. You just go out there and perform, which as a quarterback you love. You love having the control over the whole offense. And so, I mean, overall, it's just explosive, and I love it.
And Taylor, it seems like you and Tyrone right from day one had a good connection. Uh, what kind of went into that? You know, you guys, he transferred in last year. You've only been here a couple of months. How did that chemistry kind of build so quickly? I feel like, I mean, it started when I got here in January. Uh, just having them like out there after after practice, you know, just throwing routes on the air, you know, um, just getting to know everybody um, on a personal level, just hanging out and just hanging out with the guys and all that. So, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely pretty cool. I've only been here, you know, three months, but you know, I feel like our chemistry is is, is good, but it can always be better, you know, and just being on the same page, not only with Ty but all my receivers and. Um, not only my receivers, but, you know, uh, Coach Petrino, and that's what he harps on with us, you know, being on the same page on why he calls plays, what he, what's, what is he thinking, you know, so just being on the same page and then building and building chemistry. For any of you, maybe Taylor first, just, it seems like Isaiah Satania has really grown, grown a lot. I know you weren't with him last year, but has grown a lot since last year. Just what have you seen from him in spring so far? I feel like he has a natural feel for the game, you know, just natural pockets and zones, um, on different routes and options that he has. And, you know, when they play, when they play a man, you know, you already know the speed that he has, um, the separation that he can create. And it's definitely uh, a, a matchup that we like and just the ability and the versatility that he has, you know, it's really, it's really cool to see. And, um, you know, we just have to do our job and just give him the ball and let him, let him uh, go to work. What's been your evaluations of the tight ends so far, just as receivers and in the passing game? They're explosive, you know. Um, he's Luke, you know, all all the tight ends, you know, they they can do both pass and run, and that's that's a that's a really good good thing for a quarterback, you know. Um, just Mr. Reliable, you know, just when in doubt, you know, find find your tight end, and, you know. Um uh Keys had like a crazy catch today, yeah. like a dude on his back, and just seeing that, um, it it builds confidence in us, you know, and builds trust in us that, you know. Even even if it seems like he covered, if you put it in the right spot, you know, they're going to come down with it. Nicole, you've worked with the offensive line from last year and then also like this year. Just We've heard a little bit from them about the differences between last season and this season. What differences do you see and how do you feel about how the offensive line has shaped up so far? I'd say the connection. I mean, every single week, every single day of the week, they're doing something together. It's eating, hanging out, doing something. And as for all three of us, you love that just because, like, those are – for us, those are the top tier guys. Like those are the guys. Like, if we're going to be successful, it all starts up front. And so you see that every single day. It's like, okay, let me make sure I'm doing what I have to do. They're doing what they have to do. And so you just love it. And from last year, I mean, you had that same connection, but there were just little pieces that were just bits and pieces that wasn't just there. And for now, I mean, as you can see, we got a lot of transfers in the portal for O line and. You just look at them now, and it's the connection, the brotherhood that they all have, and everyone loves it. Taylor, uh, in your first couple of months here, you know, what have your first impressions been of Coach Petrino, and what area of your game has he helped you grow the most in? I'm going to answer the second one first. Um, my IQ, you know, of just knowing knowing football and knowing the ins and outs and knowing the whys and why um, concepts work against what coverage, you know, and just going through my reads and – um, a big thing is, you know, just being consistent with that and being consistent with my footwork and um, what he, he harps on me and, and us, you know, just having an expectation of, you know, no every single drive, you know, we're, we're, our goal is to score, you know, and we're going to score. And if we don't score, you know, he's going to he's going to get on us. And, you know, that's what I like. You know, he, he definitely keeps it real. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear, it, but you need to hear it. You know, you need to, you need that, you know, you need that info. You need that person to just keep it real and just keep it honest and keep it blown with you. So that's what, that's what I like. And then today and throughout spring for all three of you, uh, two freshmen, Braylon Russell, CJ Brown, really a flash. What have you guys seen from those two guys in their first couple months? Um, I think both of those guys are going to be really good players for us. Um, CJ Brown has had a really good spring, you know, really good off the line, really good releases, uh, finds open spaces on option routes a uh, really smart player as well. Um, and Braylon Russell, I mean, you see him, he, he's a unit. <laughs> and he's fast, so I, I've never seen one like him. Uh, he's a really good player and definitely will play a lot for us. Adeline mentioned footwork a little bit. Is there anything else that Coach Petrino's worked with, maybe mechanically or anything like that? Um, just, I would say just 
um, keeping the ball up, you know, while I'm moving in the pocket um, and just having subtle feet. You know, when, when there's always times of fade away, you know, when to fade away, knowing my protection and um, if I'm hot, if I'm not, and just the ins and outs that goes that goes about with that. I mean, keeping it up for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jacoby, I know you know who Matt Jones is. I was curious, Taylor, if you know who Matt Jones is. Yeah, I know. I know a little bit about him. You know, we watch, we watch, uh, we watch film and in our installs. Uh, Matt Jones and Mallet and all them. So you know, I know a little bit about it. Yeah. Has anybody told you you remind them? Uh, a couple, a couple of people. <laughs> yeah. What, well, what do they say? I mean, obviously, there's the long stride and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Height. Yeah, the height, like you said, big frame. Um, Long strides, like you said, and um, just the arm and, and all that. So, I mean, I'm definitely, definitely grateful for the comparison. You know, and just trying to trying to get like him. You know, <laughs> Malachi, we've heard these two talking about Petrino offense. What what is it about it that appeals to you, maybe? Um, really, just everything. Uh, I love how he wants us to be explosive. Um, in the run game as well in the pass game. And, you know, he just wants us to be smart football players. You know, he gives us the keys to the offense, like Jacoby was saying earlier. And, you know, it's it's on us to to get us in the right play, get us in the right run checks. Mm -hmm. um, so really just having the keys to the offense, being able to to play my game and, and you know, our game, uh, just really been – I've been grateful for it. So, Sam, what led to the hot start? And can you uh, talk about the touchdown to, to lose the play? And then why did things slow down after that? Three All right, three part hot start. Uh, you know, we put a big emphasis on you know starting fast. You know, um, throughout the week we had like our fastball. We call it um, starting the practice in um, the first. I think it was Tuesday. We didn't start how we wanted to, and that was the big emphasis of you know first quarter setting the tempo and setting set the having the mentality of we're about to we're about to go score on the first drive. And what was it, what was the second part? The, the touchdown a little bit whatever. Uh, you know, it was a concept just um uh, just reading the uh safety in the corner. Uh just saw Luke open, just made a made a throw and he he made the play. And I feel like um it slowed down a little bit. Um it was just self-inflicted errors. Um, you know, we and there's no excuse, you know, we even though we get tired, it's a four quarter game, you know, it's gonna be tired, but having the mental endurance to to stay on our technique and stay on our reads and um, just the the ins and outs and the details of 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 doing it in the fourth quarter or the two minute and when, even when you're tired, you know everybody can do it when you're 100 percent healthy, you know 100 um, percent in your tank. But it, the the champions and the and the the great teams, you know, do it in the fourth quarter. Say when you rest about Tyrone earlier, but it seems like you have a good connection with Andrew Armstrong as well. Just what what makes him so talented as a receiver? It's another another versatile um, receiver. You know, he can beat you deep. He can his comebacks, his slants. You know, you never know what route he's going to do, and he's going to create separation. And that's the one thing. And um, both of them, when when they when we come to the sideline. Um, I I like ask them what they're thinking on um, certain certain routes, and you know sometimes they'd be like, "Man, just just throw it, and I'm gonna catch it. Just throw it, and I'm gonna catch it." And I was like, "All right." And then coming from a quarterback, you know that's that's good to hear. You know, just um, just giving them an opportunity. I already know that they're gonna come down with it. You know, it's not a fifty fifty ball. You know, it's they they're gonna come down with it, or nobody's gonna come down. But most of the time, they're gonna come down with it. And for Jacoby or Malachi, uh, you know, Taylor mentioned that the catch by Marquise Gums today, and it seems like he's caught a lot of passes this uh, spring, more so than even last year. Just where has he improved? What have y'all uh, thought of his spring? Um, for me, I just think his confidence is through the roof right now. Um, to me, he's always been a really good player. He's 6'3", you know, 240, and one of the fastest players on the team. So, uh, you know, he's a versatile player. He can block. He can run routes really good. He creates a lot of separation. Uh, his hands are huge. So, you know, when you throw it to him, it's going to be a catch. So he, he, he's just one of those guys, you know, a freak athlete. And, you know, we just got to get him the ball. Taylor, how did it um, – I guess how did it start with Arkansas? And uh, Bobby Petrino, I guess, recruited you in high school a little bit when he was at Missouri State, I guess. Um, how did that develop? Like, what did they say? And, you know, I guess what was your sense of – how they identified you and, and decided to, to go after you as their quarterback. I'll say 
I know uh, the whole transition, the whole process was really, really fast, you know, um, into the transfer portal, you know, um, he texted me um, and we visited and um, was talking balls for like two hours and it went by fast, you know, and I already knew like he knows, he knows, he knows way more than me, you know. Uh, so I, I decided, you know, take a visit. That was my, this, this was my first visit. And this was actually my first official visit, you know, because COVID and everything, I couldn't take any visits. And um, visited and we saw, we was watching um, Louisville and, you know, Lamar Jackson and all that. And his vision for me, I mean, that's what I, you know, fell in love with in the, the details and the knowledge that he was talking about, you know, when he gets on the right board, you know, when he gets on the right way. <laughs> Um, but um, I just fell in love with, you know, this place and I prayed about it and talked to my family about it. And, you know, I had other visits planned. But um, after the visit, I was like, I don't need to I don't need to take any more visits. This is where this is where I am. You know, I could see myself in the, you know, the red and the white. So that's what that's what I, I just fell in love with the with the visit and, and Coach Pitt and everybody. How long were you in the portal before you heard from Arkansas? <laughs> I would say like. A day, a day or two, um, you know, Coach Petrino would text me or, or call me um, every morning. You know, sometimes I told him, I'm like, Coach, it's, it's 6 a.m., 7 a.m., Coach. <laughs> I'm asleep. I'm, I'm catching up on sleep for the season. So it was – but I'm definitely, you know, grateful, you know, for the opportunity and blessed for the opportunity I have to be uh, coached by uh, the best – I believe, you know, the best coach um, – in in America, you know, so it's definitely a blessing. How when you were recruited by him in high school, like was that like a heavy recruitment or was it just a little talking here and there? Or was how active, I guess, was it? I would say it was it was pretty active. Um, you know, just him being in Missouri State, I had like a couple of teammates um on the team at the time and um I was talking to Coach Vicino about them uh and just just him being there, like I said, it was COVID. So, you know, he believed in me even when he couldn't see me throw, you know, I'm just watching the film. Um, that's what really spoke out to me. And, um, and, yeah. I guess you said when Coach Petrino gets on the whiteboard, is that, is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. What what does he do? Oh, he goes into into detail every single play. Um, just the, the literally the ins and outs. Um, he's like, he's never surprised at any look at the defense, you know, um, every single question that we have, you know, he has an answer for it. He's not, you know, like, it's not going to take him in. He has an answer, answer like that, you know? So that's what um, I love and we love as a quarterback, you know, I mean, they can, they can add to the, uh, to the whiteboard. Man, it's like, when he gets up there, he, he'll draw you like five different blitzes for that formation, that protection. And everything can be picked up. We have the chance to to change the protection to pick it up. Uh, just stuff like that. Like he he gets into real detail with it, and it's real easy for us to pick up on it. For uh, I believe, and he just makes it easy for us, and I like that. They, they nailed it. That's it. That was a great job. Appreciate you.